Listen up, real estate investors, entrepreneurs, and agents. You're in the right place. Unlocking the secrets to real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Welcome to the Titanium Vault, hosted by RJ Bates III. Here's RJ. Hey guys, welcome to the Titanium Vault. I'm your host, RJ Bates. Today I'm sitting down with my good buddy, Andrew LeBaron. How you doing, man? Good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so real quick, I want to share a, a quick story about how Andrew and I met uh, way back in the day. Uh, for anybody who listens to the Titanium Vault regularly, I'm sure you've heard me tell my story about my first ever podcast that I did with Joe Fairless, how I, I couldn't even breathe at the beginning. I was so nervous. Um, Andrew was actually doing the scheduling for Joe's podcast at the time. And that's the first interaction that Andrew and I ever had together. And, uh, you know, this morning as I'm driving to the office, I'm like, I am pretty sure Andrew was the guy that scheduled my interview with Joe <laughs> Fairless. And I'm like, I have to ask him because Andrew and I, we've done business together. We, I've bought, you know, I think almost 10 deals from him in Arizona. And uh, I we never actually discussed that. And so I wasn't sure. And he was laughing this morning. He's like, that is how we met. So uh, just a funny little story and how the world kind of, it's a small world, you know, and, and how we ended up doing business together. And here we are today. So it's a pleasure to have you, buddy. And, and thank you so much for uh, forcing me to do that first interview with Joe. Otherwise, uh, I don't think I would end up having my own podcast and enjoying it as much as I do now. That's awesome. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to whisper that in Joe's ear. It, it's funny that was some years ago, Joe Fairless on his podcast said, "I'm looking for a marketing coordinator, someone that can help me out get bookings with new investors." I'm thinking in my head, "Oh, this is awesome! I can meet new people. I can meet new investors. I can meet new buyers. I can meet new partners. This is great opportunity for me." So. He's like, yeah, just go on LinkedIn, go on Facebook and just search around for people that you think are players in the game. Kind of ask them, you know, are they doing deals, figure them out and then right. send them an appointment, an appointment link. So I saw RJ and then shoot, I just, it didn't even hit me that, <laughs> you know, he does one every day, right? Yeah. You know, you know, we scheduled thousands. Yeah. So, so we scheduled, I, I look back and we scheduled Max Maxwell back, 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 back in the day before he blew up. Mm -hmm. and I go back in my messages and dang it, Max, you got to respond back to me, bro. Um, <laughs> and I, I noticed that he's, he, he agreed to, you know, an actual interview, but this is before anything happened. So I, I go back to him just, just about a month ago. I was like, dude, can you believe we have history? He's, he's too yeah. good for me now. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you bring up Max and then I'll go back to, to the Joe Fairless. When I had Max on the podcast, I had no idea who Max was. And I look back at it. I actually went back. Rarely do I actually listen to the interviews myself, but I went back and I listened to that interview and I was blown away. Like I had no idea who I had on the show that day. Like I, I had no, I, I had no idea about wholesaling houses elite. I had no idea about his YouTube channel. This is all before, oh, wow. you know, the past 12 months when it blew up and uh, he just dropped some massive content on the podcast that day. And, uh, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get them right before, before the Max Maxwell boom. And uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's funny to see, you know, sometimes you don't, you have no clue who you have on as a guest or who they're going to turn out to be. So it's amazing to see what he's uh, done with his career. Uh, but you and I were talking before about the fact that you reached out to me on LinkedIn. And, and I, I just dropped a comment that I couldn't even believe that you were able to make contact with me on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, is LinkedIn something that you still use in your business or is it kind of just like the dinosaur now where it's almost impossible to get a hold of people? No, LinkedIn is, is a great tool today. It wasn't about eight months to a year ago to today. It's becoming more robust. It's becoming more connected. It's a great way to market product services, um, or your podcast, for example. But, but back, back when I reached out to you, RJ, LinkedIn was dead. Okay, yeah. It was dead. It was a miracle that you, I would only use LinkedIn to find people's email addresses and I would send them, I would send them a message as well, uh, praying yeah. that they'd get back to me, but people didn't get back to me. People, there was no engagement on LinkedIn. So. I almost feel bad because, you know, you get so many spam messages on LinkedIn 
you know that there has to be like a legitimate business opportunity in your, in your LinkedIn box, but it's so bad, you know? So it's interesting to hear you say that it is turning out to, you know, they're turning the tide and, and it's becoming better, um, especially for some of the products and services that you have. Um, are you doing a lot of the inbox messages like other people or is it just making connections? Yeah. Yeah. We do. We do do a lot of inbox messages. Um, the in mail, what is effective on LinkedIn is video because it's not people that use LinkedIn aren't used to it yet. So it captures our attention. I think over 20% more than Facebook video captures people's attention. Facebook video is now becoming, um, you know, commonplace. Yes, video is the best to use to capture attention, but it's become commonplace. So LinkedIn is the new gold rush. And LinkedIn has a client base of people who are typically over the age of 35, 37, all the way up to 67 years old. So you have an older audience on there, meaning they have more capital, they have more money. It's a great place to raise private capital. It's a great place to find partners, um, people that want to use your products and services people that are well established. It's not a great place uh, to find clients to pitch social media advertising. You know, it's not that Facebook probably would be best, but right. That's your older clientele. LinkedIn is, it's a gold mine right now. Interesting. You know, I, I, I always find it crazy how, you know, there's always something new coming about or even older services, you know, they, they, they find a way to find their little niche in the industry. Um, so that's interesting to know that about LinkedIn. Um, you know, probably six, seven months ago, um, we, we had a show on Propelio TV. And so every Tuesday we would go into the studios. And I remember Ryan Harper at Propelio, he was freaking out because someone was doing a LinkedIn live video. And he was like, what is this? I've never seen this before. He's like, how do I get Propelio on here? And he was, he was messaging everybody uh, at LinkedIn, like, how do we get this? How do we get this? And, and you're right. I mean, because it wasn't as commonplace back then, he was trying to be one of the first people because it is going to suddenly become more engaging because you don't see videos on LinkedIn. So uh, very interesting. So anyways, getting back to today's topic, um, who is Andrew LeBaron and what do you, where are you located and what do you do in real estate investing? Great. Phoenix, Arizona, and I do all things under the sun. We do wholesale, creative deals, fix and flip, whatever makes sense. So I know you 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 have a passion for the creative deals, and and I kind of want to jump into that here in a little bit. But I always like to kind of tell people how everybody got their start, right? Uh, because there's a lot of people that watch podcasts, uh, just from what I've seen that, you know, they're trying to figure out how can I make my own path in this industry, right? And so I I think a lot of times people can, you know, take from other people's stories, maybe resonate with a certain part of your story. So how did you get into real estate investing and and get your start? Awesome question. And funny enough, how I got my start actually coincides with creative deals. So check this out. I was a manager at JP Morgan Chase. We, uh, it was a call center, mortgages, home equity line of credits. I managed over a hundred people in two different countries. It was in Tempe, Arizona with a large call center, Chase Bank call center, but I managed bilingual, um, Spanish speaker, English speaker, uh, mortgage specialist, and also Filipino, a Filipino team. So I managed two different locations, Manila, Philippines, and uh, Tempe, Arizona. And we would work with sellers that need to get payoff quotes. You guys know this, if you guys are in the real estate industry. Um, Payoff quotes, they wanna get mortgage statements, they wanna get amortization, schedules, you know, stuff like that, easy stuff. But whenever someone calls in and asks for a payoff quote on more than three properties, it has to be escalated to a manager. So in this case, um, it was escalated to me. This guy calls in, he's like, Hey, I need a payoff quote for 10 loans. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So I look up the properties and his name is not anywhere on these properties. (laughs) You know, nowhere. I'm like, wait, wait, wait a minute. You, how, are these yours? I see you're authorized, but are these yours? She's like, no, the, well, these are mine, but uh, I'm not the mortgage holder, note holder. I'm like, well, then how, how can I give you that? He said, well, I'm third party authorized. You can give me whatever I ask for. I'm like, okay, you're right. So I generate 10 payoff quotes for all these properties. I said, well, why do you have all these loans that you don't 
you're not financially liable for it. He's like, oh, it's a creative uh, acquisition that I do in real estate. These are all Southern California properties. Venice Beach, Mission Beach, oh, wow. um, Newport. Yeah, these, are, these, are, these are multi-million dollar shacks, okay? So he picked these properties up. This is probably 2012, 2011, 2012. So he picks these properties up and he has a buyer who's going to buy all 10 of these properties. Well, I come to find out that he bought these properties in uh, like pre foreclosure. He paid the reinstatement fee on all these properties. They were in pre foreclosure. So he, he got private money to pay the reinstatement fee on all these properties. And then he sold all the properties as a package deal to a new buyer, made 4 million on it. Oh my goodness. And he did this in like, um, a year, like a year and three months. So I'm like, I'm in the wrong business. This was, this was when like my eyes were open. I said, dude, I can't see people doing stuff like this. This guy is like 34 years old. He's young. Right. I got to get some of this action. So I got his phone number and Chase Bank's going to sue me for saying no. I got his phone number and I called him off the clock. And he's like, you know what? I'm not really interested in mentoring you, but you can go check out a website called biggerpockets.com. So I was like, all right. He's like, yeah, they have some info. There's people in there that'll help you. Ever since that moment, it's all been downhill. It's all, I left my job uh, probably eight months later because I actually rehabbed a couple of deals and wholesaled a couple of deals, but my passion was in creative, creative deal structure. That's awesome, man. That's a, that's a really cool story. And obviously, I, I'm assuming he took those down subject too and, yep. and then paid the reinstatement and then eventually sold them as a package deal. Um, he was probably getting them, you know, it sounds like an amazing deal in order to, to sell them as a, a portfolio package. So um, that's a really uh, interesting way for you to kind of be your eyes open to the creative financing strategies, right? So did you actually take his advice? Did you go to bigger pockets and start like feeding yourself education? Yeah, I'm watching, I'm looking at the ultimate beginner's guide on bigger pockets. It's 2012. Okay. It's a long time ago. Um, I'm, I'm reading up on Joshua Dork and Brandon Turner. I'm, I'm reading up on all these investors in the space. I find out that a couple of these big dogs are in my own market. Then I realize that a lot of big dogs are in my own market. I go to a couple of seminars. I go to Sean Terry's Extreme Freedom. I'm, I'm just learning. I'm leaving work. I'm, I'm getting vacation time. I'm learning, learning, learning. Okay. And it, it, it was just, it was just overwhelmed. It was cramming my mind. It, it was just tons and tons of information. And I knew I had to eventually just take action. That's so I, I know did. that, you know, right now, one of your main businesses is your wholesaling business in Arizona that now has branched out to several other States. Is that what you started with was, Hey, I'm going to, my main business is going to be wholesaling. Correct. Yep. That was my bread and butter. That's how I was going to make money. Um, wholesaling. I also bought a duplex. I lived in the front. I rented out the back. So that would help me mm -hmm. when wholesaling wasn't doing so hot, but it's always been such a hot market here. There's always deals here. Yep. Um, I was going to be okay. Did you start the business by yourself or did you start with a partner? Great question. I had a mentor, I called a FISBO sign and he found, he, he saw me as a bird dog. So I had a mentor um, work with me for about six months. It didn't really work out. We kind of didn't see eye to eye on marketing strategy. And then after that, I jumped into another wholesale team as an acquisition guy. And I mean, this is like one of the best, largest wholesale teams in Phoenix, in all of Arizona. And I just learned dispo acquisition. I learned marketing negotiation. I learned, I learned all the skills you need to be a successful six, seven figure flipper or wholesaler. And then from there I got a partner on board and we decided to build our own thing. So that's interesting, man. You did something that most people that have that entrepreneur spirit are not willing to do. You actually went and worked for someone else and, and it's interesting how you kind of worded that. Like, yeah, you went and worked with them, but you also kind of viewed it as like an education process. Like earn while you learn. Right. Like that, that was never going to be like your forever place. Right. But you knew going in that it was an opportunity for you to learn how they built their operation. So RJ, it's funny. It's funny you say it because I, I was selling deals to this group. This group was buying my deals. It was like, it would be like me selling it to you, RJ. And then you reach out to me and say, Hey, Andrew, I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to pay you 
you know, two grand a month on a draw or a three grand a month on a draw and you get 10% of every deal that comes in. Right. Okay? And so I was like, heck yeah. Right. But I didn't, I didn't realize that I'm actually trading, you know, a lot for a little, you know, but at the same time, it was nice to get my feet wet and learn the business so that I can develop myself. And one month I remember having like 10 deals and we had tears, but I was just thinking, man, this is awesome. I'm learning from the best and this is invaluable. Yeah, I mean, well, so often I talk to newer investors or, or people that want to wholesale, right? And they'll go three, four, five, six months before they get their first deal. I mean, we, we talked about Max Maxwell, you know, Wholesaling Houses Elite. I mean, there's like 85,000 members in there. I mean, if you join that group, you'll see 25 posts today where it's like, I'm grinding so hard for the past six months. I still haven't gotten my first deal where pretty much all of those people could have done what you did, which is, Hey, I'm willing to come in here. I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to bust my ass to, to be an acquisitions person or a dispositions person and watch how these people are actually doing it. The people that already made all the mistakes that you're going to go make for the first six or 12 months while you're trying to find that first or, you know, first handful of deals, right? Because it doesn't stop after your first deal, right? You no. get that first deal. Yeah. <laughs> then all of a sudden, you're like, man. it could be six months. Is it going to take me another six months, you know? Right. So it, that's, a, that's a very, you know, interesting way, the, the kind of path that you took. So let's talk about when you started your own company. You said you had a partner. How did you come about finding your partner? It, was that someone from a previous life or someone you met within the real estate world? No, he was another acquisition manager on this team that we were a part of. Okay. So, so even um, more of a reason to do what we were talking about. <laughs> right, 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 right. And our, our team knew we were going to go do our own thing. They knew that. They knew we, they weren't going to keep us. So, yeah. and that's fine. It was a general understanding between everyone. So I took my partner with me, Isaac, my Isaac Moore, and we decided to de develop processes. Okay, what, what's the process for acquisition? Let's line it out. Let's outline it. What's that process? What's the process for marketing? What's the most effective? What's the least effective? We just started writing up all these processes. And then we started putting people behind each process. And suddenly deals came in the, the wheelhouse. So we just took what we learned from this master wholesale team that also does fix and flips. And we built it out into our own operation. So, you know, you're big on Facebook, you know, you do a lot of Facebook lives and, you know, you have your own uh, Facebook group. Um, what's the name of it? Flipping Paper, Wholesaling yep. Flipping Paper. Houses flip, yep. That's it. Yep. Wholesaling Houses Flipping Paper. Yeah. So, and y'all are big on there and you give a, a ton of great content. And just based off of like, I've never actually talked to Isaac, but I, from the feeling that I get between the two of y'all, y'all are kind of a perfect match for each other and the fact that y'all are kind of like, you know, each other's yin and yang. Um, what are kind of the different roles that y'all have within the company? Excellent. So I oversee a lot of marketing um, processes. I oversee the infrastructure of the business and scale. Isaac oversees implementation of those processes, who's doing their job, KPIs, reporting, analytics, uh, he looks at the numbers every week we get together, we do a team meeting. Um, he's definitely the analytical side. I'm more the visionary and uh, I'm the dog that barks and he's the dog that walks. It's just, <laughs> that's just how it's been. Um, he, he, and it, you say yin and yang and it, it's exactly that way. We, we work so cohesively together. We've had our down months. We've had amazing months, but we both take responsibility. I wouldn't do this without a partner. I, I don't think I could. Um, it would be extremely difficult for me to do it without a partner. Um, I wouldn't even want, I wouldn't even want employees. I'd rather have a partner that's joint with me because that much added effort is going to help me uh, get a lot further. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm the same way, man. Uh, there's definitely those down times where I'm like, man, it would be so much easier if this was just RJ at home in his office, you know, getting deals, selling deals, nobody to pay. But at the end of the day, the, the benefits of having a team and having those partners, you know, obviously we're in multiple states and so we have different partners in those locations. Um, 
you know, sometimes it, it's burdensome. You know, I can have something absolutely amazing going on in Arizona and then the world is falling in Hawaii at the same time and my emotions are all over the place, right? Where it's like, am I supposed to be happy right now? Am I supposed to be upset? Um, but, but that's something that, you know, I, I've kind of gotten used to and found ways to deal with. And, and, you know, you guys are expanding to different states now. Y'all are in, in three or four different states. Is that something that you are finding is, is uh, troublesome as, as it is for me, where, you know, something might be going really well in Arizona, but not so good in Texas or vice versa? Yeah, so it's funny. Our cost per lead in Arizona is above 10 grand, okay? And we broke it down cost per lead-wise in marketing, VAs, software everything else our cost per lead in texas is south of 5k yep you know and it, i'm like what um <laughs> in alabama it's the same way and if your cost per lead is less you have to ask yourself what's your what's your overall return now my the the leads here or the deals here actual conversions here render a yield of approximately fifteen thousand dollars on average so they could be a lot of deals. We do 30K, 20K, uh, but mostly anywhere in the 15K range, um, rarely below 10K here in Arizona. In Texas, it's a little bit skinnier, but it's a lot more worth. There's more opportunity in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking put, put, put your capital where your return on investment is going to be more sound. And no, I guess your question is, are you seeing tr problems everywhere? I see problems in Arizona. I see problems in Texas. We see problems in any state that we're in, but um, you, just, so you like, just get through it. You know, with you being the visionary, do you kind of view yourself as the CEO? Are y'all following like the traction uh, EOS where you're the visionary, the CEO, and Isaac's the COO integrator? Right. Right. We, we don't have titles, but I love traction that, that whole, that the whole book is really, if it's your infrastructure, you're going to grow well. Um, Isaac and I just co-founders. Um, but yeah, I, I would say I'm more the visionary. He's more of the implementation and reporting and analytics. So it's funny you say that you don't like titles cause we're not big on titles either. I, I think that's more of like an ego thing than anything, you know, big time. Big I mean, time. you know, it's like, I, I don't need somebody to call me the CEO. You know, I, I used to have CEO of titanium investments on my Facebook profile and I changed it now to where it just says owner and founder. There like, you go. Those are, those are things that can't be taken away from me. I own it and I founded it and whatever anybody else wants to call themselves within titanium, you know, it's like, you know, whatever you like, even for example, my quote unquote assistant, Lindsay, right? Like, I wouldn't even call her an assistant because that would be that that's not even fair to her for all the things that she does. Cause you know, yeah, we one, say team member. Yeah. I mean, we, we one say team second member. she's getting me lunch and then the next second she's doing bookkeeping, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Those are two different things. So uh, it, it is funny about, you know, how people get wrapped up in that. And traction is such a big thing since it's come out, you know, a couple of years ago. And especially in the real estate investing world, I, I don't know if it's as big in, in other industries as it is in real estate investing, but um, there's a lot of really good things in that book. And it is good for us to identify our strengths and weaknesses, right? Like for you, your strength is being the visionary and coming up with ideas, but without having that partner to implement those things, like you said, you, you would be lost. Yep. And it wouldn't matter how to identify that. Yeah, it, it, you're, you're exactly right. It wouldn't matter how good of a dreamer I am or how good of a plan something written out is. It wouldn't matter. Um, and it, as well as analyzing or tracking, you know, if you don't have the analyzing or tracking part of it all, it, it just doesn't make sense. You can't set goals. You can't measure success. You can't mm -hmm. measure progress. So with, with you expanding out of Arizona and going to Texas and Alabama, I'm assuming that was your vision did Isaac have any concerns about expanding to virtual markets? No. In fact, Isaac used to wholesale in Houston. He did some deals in Houston before any of this happened, before we were even partners. And so he's got 
he's got a little bit of a track record over there in Houston. He's got some people. Funny enough, we actually almost wholesaled a new deal in Houston from a very old lead he had. It actually fell fell through. <laughs> um, Emil wasn't really too happy. But um, but the long story short, I think uh, I think Isaac never says no to me, which is which is really interesting. Um, he, he, it's not that he doesn't say no. He, chal- he, he will challenge an idea that I have. And I think a good partner is one who's not afraid to challenge your idea. Um, something I talked about yesterday, if you've ever read about Ray Dalio and Principles, Bridgewater Associates, one of the largest trading companies in the world, um, he was the founder. And he says, we believe in a, mer- in a meritocracy in our company where we challenge each person. We we even name call. Now we don't name call. We keep it pretty, pretty <laughs> nice around here. But at the same time, we'll challenge. What, and we're not afraid. Um, Isaac says, "Okay, Andrew, you want to do some cold calling in a different state? Is your script going to be the same thing? Um, what kind of uh, age range are you going to hit? What's our target audience? Are you sure that's going to work? And how long do you want to do this? You know what I mean? He'll he'll challenge all these things. And actually, I'm not even good at challenging." I'm, I'm more of a, let's go rah, rah, re type guy. And he's more of a, well, let's really break this down and figure this out because I'm not, you know, you can hope in one hand and wish in the other and see which gets you further. And, right. and he, yeah, I mean, he, he knows how to really challenge you and you feel like you're put on the spot, but that's how we grow. So well, that's cool because what, what I would assume from like the outside hearing you talk about that is going to end up happening is, is that as you come up with visions and ideas within your company, you are naturally going to challenge yourself before you present the idea because you're going to like, well, if the last time I brought this to Isaac, he brought this question and I didn't have the answer. So I want to make, <laughs> I really like this idea. So I want to know my answer before he asks and, and, and you'll naturally become better. And, and in turn, he will be become better at challenging you, right? Because he's going to know, well, Andrew already, you know, the last time I asked that, he already knew the answer. So as he brings new ideas, I'm going to have to push further and further. And that's what makes your company better in the end, right? So that's, yeah. that's a really cool uh, dynamic between you guys as, as partners. Um, I also know that, you know, outside of, you know, wholesaling and, and other markets, uh, you guys have created multiple businesses and and products um, and services, you know, from from your experience in your whole seven businesses. So talk about those for a little, you know, a little bit. Absolutely, our most exciting product that we have is Push to Close. It's a text message sending platform. It allows you to start literally a thousand conversations with the push of a button. That's what we have on our home screen. It's kind of fun. Um, the reason why we chose conversations is because we're all about uh, creating rapport, not about spamming people. Um, one of the greatest response rates out there or for marketing is going to be your text message marketing. It's above 30%, depending on your list. It's really good. It works really well. And it works really well if you contact a group of people with the intent of having a conversation and getting them onto the phone, which is the next step. Um, that's a product that we have. We have three different plans for it. You can go to pushtoclose.com um, and test it out if you're interested. But it's uh, it's an awesome service. So break that down other, real quick on, on starting a conversation. What do you mean right. by that compared to, you know, the, the people that are just texting like, hey, are you interested in selling your house at 123 Main Street? What, what is the difference there? Right, right. So we'll still use that style template. Um, it's it's important that you address who you are. You shouldn't send a blind text message. You shouldn't say, um, hey, is your house available for sale? That's not good. You should say, hi, I'm RJ. I noticed you on 123 Main Street. Have you considered selling it? You know, that's just a question. Right. You're not spamming them with, um, hey, I'd like to sell you um, CBD oil at 30% discount. You know, you're not... <laughs> Click the link below. Right. You know, Click here. Those, oh my gosh. Don't send a link in a text message. So right. my point is you, you are starting consciously a conversation. And if you start a conversation, you're going to get a lot further in building rapport, trust, and getting them on the phone than you are with spamming. So it's not a spray and pray. But the first question you ask is you're literally inquiring um, about the property that they own. 
and you're not even saying their name. You don't even say their name because nobody has data perfect enough to get it 100% accurate every single time. You know what I mean? No one does. Right. I, there's a lot of data companies out there. They're all awesome. But I'm not going to say, hi, RJ. My name is Andrew because I don't know if you really are. What I'll say, I'll assume you already own the house. I'll assume you already do. I'll say, hi, my name is Andrew. I noticed that you own 123 Main Street. Have you ever inquired about selling it? I always end the initial message with a question because that makes them, promotes them to respond. There's a lot of different other questions or initial messages you can right. use. That one's worked out really well. One, if, you, if you're ready to like hustle, you get them on the phone. You say, hi, my name is Andrew, and I notice you own 123 Main Street. Are you open for a call about selling your house? Or would you consider selling? And if you are, would you consider giving me a call? People will call you. So they'll call that text message, which is routed through call rail straight to your phone. Awesome. Um, so that, you know, I, I, you don't have to go into the entire service. Sure. That, that's a really, you know, there's a lot of good tips there. Um, and even if like push to close is not something in your budget right now, or you're not going to be trying to do mass text messaging, even if you're just sending a single text to a homeowner um, while driving for dollars or walking or, you know, maybe it's a neighbor's house or whatever. I think those are really good tips where, like you said, you're always ending with a question. Don't assume that the data that you have is correct um, because what if this is a six figure deal and I text, Hey, Andrew, you know, do you want to sell one, two, three main street and RJ owns it and not Andrew. And I just don't respond to you because you said Andrew. Correct. Cost yourself a six figure deal right off the bat. So there's a, there's a lot of really good tips there. So what are some of the other products and services that you guys have created? Another product or another service that we have is buymoretime.com. Just like it sounds, buy more time and it's virtual assistants. They come trained in the real estate investing industry. Uh, we have clients that are brokers, agents, and real estate investors. They draft contracts. They do transaction coordination. They open and close escrow. Uh, they talk to sellers. They talk to buyers. They plan an open house. They can do anything that can be done virtually, sending DocuSign, um, updating your CRM, whether you're using Podio, Pipedrive, whatever CRM you use, um, they can do it all. They're they're trained in all things. And if there's something that you have that's unique that we haven't seen before, we can train them. And we work with you one-on-one -on -one to train your own VA. And I'm assuming that the reason why you have a VA service is because VAs are a large part of your current wholesaling business? Huge part. Yeah. And, and you know what? I've seen that with, you know, wholesalers that are doing volume, they get a lot of credit back to the virtual assistants that they're using within your business. At what point in time in your business did y'all start hiring and implementing virtual assistants in your wholesaling business? Day one, I started with our first one. Her name was Pam. It's so funny, we got, I got on the phone. I, I, we came from, do you know Ivis? Um, oh, I don't international virtual assistant something anyways it's it's one for real estate so they're they're pretty cool we had one named clara in the company i worked for okay so i left that company this is kind of awkward and i said clara do you have a friend someone that's like you i want to replicate you i don't want to go on upwork i don't want to go on fiverr i want to find someone like you she says yes i got someone even better than me i'm like what you're amazing <laughs> clara's amazing clara's helped us close six figure months with this other company i worked for I said, I'm building my own thing now, and you're going to give me someone who's better than you? Impossible. And so she introduces me to Pam. Pam speaks super well. She's extremely proficient in all, you know, in all things. She's very good. And she immediately asked on the first interview, I want seven bucks an hour. And I'm like, holy crap, I'm not prepared to pay that. Right. You know, like I, 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 three bucks an hour, four bucks an hour, you know. And I looked at Isaac, and Isaac looked back at me. He's like, well, let's give her a shot. We never looked back. We pay her $7 an hour. You know, it's yeah. so funny. People, people complain. They're like, oh, I don't want to pay, you know, four or five bucks an hour for a VA. I'm like, dude, my first VA, I paid seven an hour and she's been amazing. So, well, in, in, you know, VAs, it, it's funny because there's a reason why you pay more for certain VAs, right? It, it's just like any other service out there. Um, you know, we, I, I had an interview yesterday and we were talking about contracting. And, and contractor bids, 
And it's like, there's an epidemic within the real estate investing world that if you have a $50,000 budget on a property and contractor A comes out and says it's $70,000, that as an investor, we immediately assume it's the contractor's fault. He's too expensive. He wants to make too much money. And so then we go find the contractor that comes in. Oh no, we lost Andrew. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep telling the story. But, yeah, but the point going. was, is that, you know, we keep going until we find the contractor that says $45,000. And then that contractor ends up not doing a good job. They go over budget. There's change orders. They take too long. And then we end up spending $100,000 on the rehab. It's the same thing with VAs. You know, we, we, we get a VA like you, you know, you're not only is she saying she's good, but the person that you already used that was excellent at their job said she's better than I am. You could have easily said, but I don't want to spend $7 an hour. I'm going to go find the $3 an hour. And from day one, that could have set you back. Like that one decision y'all made could have made such a huge, it did make such a huge difference for the trajectory of your business. So uh, just something to keep in mind there as, as business owners, don't always search for the cheapest option. Find the best option for where your business is today to, to keep the upward trajectory going. So um, that's my little rant about VAs because I, I see it all the time. You know, like you said, people just, they don't want to pay. They get it in their head where it's like, I can have someone for $3 an hour. And even if someone comes along and says, I can do three times the work of what someone can do for $3 an hour for $6 an hour, they don't do the math in their head and say, I'm getting more productivity. I'd rather hire the $3 an hour. So uh, what, what's, uh, I, I think you have one more, one more service, right? Oh, man. Um, uh, inside of Buy More Time, we do property or property management. We okay. Do, uh, uh, short-term rental property management. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So the, the last thing is offer wizard last but not least. There so you go. If you go to, yeah, there it is. So if you go to flippingpaper.com slash offer wizard, you'll never have to crunch numbers again. You literally just pop in the property address and press submit. And then right off the bat, you get a letter of intent of four, four different options offers. Excuse me. One is cash two seller finance. Three is lease option and four is a listing opportunity. Awesome. So, yeah, you could you could deselect any of those you want, but the point is they're all based off of Zillow API, you know, Zillow's estimate. You could say, I want my cash offer to be 65% of Zestimate. I want my seller finance to be 105% of Zillow's estimate. So that's pretty cool, man. And and that works nationwide, right? Yep, works everywhere. Anywhere that Zillow works, it works. And gotcha. and if you don't, if, if Zillow doesn't have a Zestimate for your property, you can manually type in an ARV. There you go. And even if it does, can you manually change the Zillow's estimate to whatever ARV you want all the time? Correct. Anytime. That's pretty awesome. That's a, I think I might have to check that out later today. <laughs> yeah, definitely do so, man. <laughs> there, there you go. So that'd be something that we check out. So man, um, you know, those are pretty awesome services. You know, how do you, as the owner of your company kind of, delegate your own time to between managing those companies and the three different markets that you're in. Where, where does Andrew spend majority of his time within those companies? I create content. I create content and make sure the well being of everybody is taken care of. Um, I'm also, I'm also doing deals too, because I, I just can't stop doing deals. You know, right. I just really enjoy it. Um, I make sure that each company has a point of contact who can uphold the expectation. Okay. So each company has got kind of their built in CEO. Okay. Someone who's willing to maintain expectation and report our, our numbers. I got that set up for each company. Um, another thing that we routinely do are meetings and we don't do meetings in the, in the sense of we get on the phone together. We do meetings inside of Voxer. I can, I can shift in between different companies through Voxer. If you don't know what Voxer is, it's a walkie-talkie app. It's extremely fast. If you ever download it and you ever use it, you'll never have to have a meeting again. There's no reason. You can create chats. You can have a whole meeting talking and, and nobody has to be on the phone. You can still be working out. You can still be doing whatever you have to do. We still have meetings. We still have weekly meetings about our businesses or about our wholesale business. 
but Voxer has removed that need to have multiple meetings. And that's how I'm able to shift between different businesses as well. Um, I can actually step away and walk away and they still make money, but I'm just so glued to the idea of making them better and scaling that I'm always going to be around. So I, I hope this doesn't completely throw you for a loop. We used Voxer for, Voxer for a very long time. There's an app called Viber. It's almost identical to Voxer, except it has like a couple of other little things in it that make it a little bit nicer and the user interface is nice. Just check it out. I, I yeah, just, no, it will do. Yeah, I think I it, have, does it do real-time sound? Or does you have to record whatever you say? And then it's real it. time. Wow. Okay. I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm doing yeah. it today. Yeah. So check it out. Um, it's something that we use. We've actually already moved on from Viber now. We use um, Facebook Workplace now, um, which is also a great app. And look, here's the thing. All three of those are fully functional. Like if you're using them, I mean, they all work. Um, it's all just about communication and what makes it best for everybody um workplace is something that it worked for us in the in the different markets that we're in because each team can have essentially like their own little mini facebook group so arizona cool. can go in and talk about what's going on with arizona they can do facebook posts they can do you know their own little work chats um you can upload files it links to our google drive just nerdy you know, systems and processes and stuff, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, we, we used Voxer back in the day. We actually learned that from Don Costa, um, the first mastermind we ever attended. And he was – I think he still uses – no, he uses Slack now. Uh, but, again, another app that, you know, just – it's funny how we all find ways to communicate because communication is such an important part of our businesses, right? It's like you said. I can be talking to three different companies all within Voxer just by clicking into a different group and staying on top of it. And it, it's funny, you brought up uh, real time, listening to it real time is important to you because you don't have to wait on a team member to stop talking. You know, if they have a two minute recording, you could be listening to it for two minutes live compared to waiting on them to finish it. And then you have to listen to it for two minutes. That's four minutes wasted, right? You exactly. That's why we haven't moved from Voxer, and I haven't found anything like like Voxer. If you say Viber it has that now, then I am I am like ninety nine percent positive that it's it's live real time. So check it check That's it out and awesome. see because there's a couple of other things in there, and just the user interface is a little bit nicer. So, um, all right, man. A couple other questions before we wrap up today. And, and again, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy guy. For people that are kind of listening to your story and they're like, well, this all sounds great, right? Like Andrew went and worked for someone else and then he found a partner and, and now they're, you know, successfully wholesaling in three different markets and they've created these services and these products from their business. This sounds great, but I don't know what to do to get started. What would you recommend to a newer wholesaler to get started in wholesaling today? What is like step one for them? Step one, have a great base and foundation. If you're in a family, if you have a wife or if you have a husband, make sure you're very open and honest with them. Let them know what you want to do and embark on. When you have that foundation, you can fail and it doesn't sting as bad. Um, and, and not when, we're not if you fail, when you fail. The next thing I want to tell you is you're going to fail and you need to welcome it because failure is just an instance of learning. That's all it is. You've got to fail. Your bank account will go negative. Um, you'll lose deals. You'll lose money. That's okay. It's never the last deal. You got millions of deals out there to buy. You got millions of things you can build. It's not over. Um, take action right now. Don't wait. If you wait, your chances of winning actually reduce significantly and exponentially. So don't wait to take action. Um, in fact, uh, make mistakes starting today. Make offers every week. If you're nervous about wholesaling, try getting on the phone with realtors. This is fun. Check this out. Get on the phone with realtors with listed signs and send them offers for wholesale. A wholesale offer. You're going to piss them off, but... That's going to help you get used to making offers 
and making deals happen. Once you learn how to wholesale, you can dip that money into anything you want, into projects, into your own house, into products and services you want to build, into this really cool podcast, and whatever, whatever you want to do, wholesaling can help you get there. Absolutely. And, and going back to the you're going to fail um, part of things, I'm going to use an example of a deal that Andrew and I did together. Um, and at one point in time, it, it got a little bit tense because why? Yeah, I remember there, that. There was, there was <laughs> failure involved, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Andrew had a, a, a deal. It was um, a sixplex, but it was a sober living facility, okay? And, and I'm crazy, right? Like I, I don't back down from things and I'm looking at Arizona as our market that cash flow, like finding rental properties with decent cash flow are, are very difficult for us to find, right? And so this was slightly above a 1% rental, um, and, and it was high numbers. So it was like, there, there's a, a good amount of net cash flow there if we can take this down and get it stabilized in long-term financing. So we locked this property down with Andrew. This is probably at this point in time, like our eighth, ninth, 10th deal that we had done together, right? Right. And so we lock it down and it was kind of a unique situation. I don't remember all the details. So I'm going to kind of glance over this, but it was kind of weird in the fact that the seller was very motivated and needed us to close, but they had not provided all of the financials yet. Like we didn't have a rent roll or something like that. And it was like, I was like, well, look, I've done business with Andrew before. I, it's okay. We're going to get it. But then our lender was like, we have to have this to close. But then Andrew's getting pushed back from the seller because the seller's not providing it. And Andrew's like, the seller's freaking out, needing us to close. And I'm like, I can't close because I don't have the documents. And nobody at this point in time was in the wrong. It was just kind of like this awkward standstill where Andrew and I are kind of staring at each other going, hey, I need you to close. And I'm like, hey, I need this document. And he's like, I know I'm waiting <laughs> on it from the seller. And then finally we get the information from the seller and then the sellers of course like any other motivated seller like the moment they hit send on the email they're like okay are you closing right now and and you know at this point in time i'll never forget this day because we got the information and we were we were supposed to getting everything scheduled to close and cassie and i here in in dallas fort worth we went to go look at one of our flips in Dallas that is about an hour away, okay? And we go look at this flip, and the moment we get there, I'm like, Cassie, I, I don't feel good. And I'm like, I mean, this was like one of those, like, I really don't feel good. And, and I just told her, I said, hey, we need to, we need to head back. Like, I, I, I think I'm going to be sick. And I, it wasn't like anything particular. It was like my whole body. And I'll never forget, dude, from that moment on, I started hallucinating and I got so sick that oh, I didn't man. know what was happening. And I was like, I had the chills, I was sweating and Cassie had no idea about this deal with Andrew. She was completely <laughs> ignorant and Andrew's like kind of freaking out a little bit like, what's going on? No, I am, but, I am freaking out. I'm not, he says, this guy's like cure notice. I got the yeah. notice prepared. Like you're going to lose. I'm like, yeah. dude, I've never had a seller wanting me to lose. And the seller is actually a hard money lender, by the way. Just yeah. Like, yeah. That, yeah. That was the other weird thing. Like there was a lot yeah. of weird things weird. about this deal. And, uh, and, and long story short, I think what actually ended up happening was, is Cassie got on the phone with our partner in Arizona, Jeremy. And it was like, Jeremy, RJ's like borderline dead. Like, I don't know what's happening over here. Like, he's hallucinating and sweating and, like, curled up in a ball in the corner. She's like, you're just going to have to handle this. And I was handling raising all the, the money. Like, that's, that's my role on these deals. Like, I raise all the money. So, Jeremy's like, I don't know what's going on. Like, RJ hasn't told me what's going on with the money, so what am I supposed to tell Andrew? So, 
at some point in time, I think Jeremy told Andrew, like, let me talk to the seller and explain what's going on. And Andrew was like, fine, go ahead, do it. Yeah. And so Jeremy gets on the phone with the seller and he's like, look, my partner who raises the money, he's really sick today. And the seller's like, hold on, you need money for the deal? I'm a lender. I'll just give you the money. And, and so literally, like two, three days later, when I come back from like whatever deathly illness I had, it's like, yeah, we closed on Madden. And I'm like, how? Madden, that's it, Madden. And, uh, and it, he was like, the seller is a lender. <laughs> and I'm like, so wait, <laughs> the seller funded the deal for us? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, but how much of it? Like, he's at 100%. You really 100% of the deal? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, this Dude, is Dude, that's how good the deal was. Yeah. So Like, I, he was going to offer that to us. I was busy with other projects at the time. Like, I'm like, ah. Um, his name is Justin. I mean, really cool dude. But, dude, they were – and the reason why he was pressing us is because I blasted it and 50 other people wanted this deal. Right. Like so many other people. And someone offered like 10K more. It was nuts. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 it's sold. It's sold. This and is RJ. So it's actually this turned out to be uh, continuing down the path of failure and, and not being afraid of it. It has been one of the more unique deals I've ever done uh, because it's a sober living facility. And there's a lot that goes into that. And, and seeing how that deal has played out, I, I flew into Phoenix. I went out there. I walked it. I saw it. A uh, very unique property. And then we've had issues with tenants that either have mental disorders or drug addictions or whatever. Um, we actually had the cops call us and, uh, uh, the cops have probably been out there 20, 30 times in the past couple of weeks. And, oh, and it's, just, it's just been a very unique uh, deal. The cash flow is great. Um, is if you want to sell flow. it, man, let me know. I got a buyer. <laughs> is the cash flow worth the issues? I, I don't know. So, but it, it's, it's been a, you know, I just wanted to share that story coming from, you know, we're not just sitting here saying, you know, you know, fail forward. Like, no, this is actually something that we're doing every day in our business where even like, you know, Andrew and I are having conversations where I'm like, I'm not trying to purposely screw you, but this is, you know, this is a new situation where, you know, you don't have financial documents because the seller's not providing them and yeah. lenders, our lenders requiring them. And there's nothing that we can do. And at some point in time, that's where it becomes like building that relationship together. And it's moments like that where you do build the relationships where it's like, okay, we are on. Because, I mean, flat out, Andrew and I had a, a, a like heart-to-heart -heart talk where it was like he, he talked to me about his point of view from his business where he's like, look, I think y'all were making like twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 assignment fee on this deal. And he's like, my team is relying on the fact that we're going to make $25,000 on this deal. Like I have people that are going to get paid. Case yeah, in multiple people in that deal. You, you know, it's costing you $10,000 per deal. So you have to recoup that marketing expense. Right. And yep. I had to give them my perspective, which was, this is a deal that we are anticipating keeping forever, that we are desperate for passive income in the Arizona branch. Like, this is not something that we want to miss out on either. And so kind of once we had that conversation, it was like, all right, we're, we're seeing eye to eye from each other's business perspective. Let's, let's just go find a way to get this deal done. And uh, luckily, we got the deal closed, and I didn't die in the process. So uh, I'm glad you didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> I, you never I, want I, your buyer... You never want your buyer to die. Yeah, no, like, man. No, I, don't die, man. <laughs> I will tell you, dude, that is probably one of the – that's the most sick I've been in a long, long time. Wow. So it was uh, – I, I felt horrible about it because I, I remember there was moments where, like, I was, like, kicking back into it, and I'm like – literally, like, well, you were one of the things that I was talking about. I was like, we got to take care of Madden. And, you know, Cassie's like, what's going on? And then I'm like, you know, 
shivering like convulsing in the corner. <laughs> so uh, it was an interesting deal. So anyways, man, um, with that being said, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us today. Um, I, I do have a fun question that I like to ask guests and I think, uh, you you fit the the prototype of being a, a guest that would have a great answer for this. Where do you want your businesses to be in the next five years? Awesome question. Um, some of the businesses I want to exit and sell the business. I want to gain as many users as possible and sell for eight figures. Um, other businesses, I want to be. I want to be worldwide. So I want to be doing these same deals in multiple countries. And there's a lot, actually funny enough, a lot of other countries that can wholesale and margins are much steeper. And I'll have to, I'll have to share that with you on a different channel. Or on a different, <laughs> you know, it's really interesting. It, it'll blow your mind. It's like, why are we settling for less? Right. So, but yeah, no, I, 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 my exit strategy is to exit in five years. I want to dive into more of a software role. I love software. I love services. Um, but also doing real estate on the side as well. When I say real estate on the side, I mean, outsource my real estate firm to a CEO, have it running, have it growing, have it building. But my, my passion is in creative deals, building systems, building software, building stuff like that. So awesome, man. Well, Andrew, thank you for taking the time to sit down with us today, man. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you're always an interesting guy to follow because I never know what you're going to be doing next. Um, for those of you, <laughs> I, I say that in, in all seriousness, man. It's true. And, yeah. and I, I love the, the culture that you've created within your company. Um, you know, obviously we've done business together in Arizona, but then you guys came and infiltrated our, our home market here in DFW with Darren. And, uh, it's a beautiful that, market over there. Dude, that guy is on fire down here. He's awesome. Uh, I, I talked to him when he first came down here. And uh, I, I'll be honest with you. The first time I talked to him, I was like, this guy, like my, my initial opinion was this guy is either going to fall flat on his face or this dude is going to crush it. And uh, he's well on his way to crushing it. He um, doesn't know how to quit. Uh, right. I, I, we wouldn't have sent him out there. You know, he, he was, he was here in, in Phoenix, not closing the deal for a couple of months. And then suddenly he blows up closing all these deals. And so he goes to Dallas and he's closing all these. He's like, dude, the deals are easier in Texas. <laughs> People say yes in Texas. They sign your contract here. You just got to see him face to face. Cause they like to be face to face. But dude, I'm like, that's, in, that's insane. That, Which we could talk about on another time, but it's, uh, I will it's not. say that is a fact about Texas compared to Arizona. It is easier here. People do say yes. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, man. Well, they it just is. trust you. They're like, all right, partner, um, you're gonna pay 90k for the house. Sounds good. Go ahead and sign. Oh, I'll go ahead and sign it. And so that it's just impressive. I'm like, wow, yeah. cool. So, anyways, I, I love that culture that you built within your company. Um, so keep doing what you're doing. Um, Real quick, tell the listeners so they can join your Facebook group and the best ways that they can connect with you. Thank you. So reach out to Wholesaling Houses Flipping Paper, or you can simply send me a DM on Facebook. You can even text me, 480-980-9022. Awesome. And uh, I'll just wrap this up because you gave out your cell phone number um, the first time when I was on Joe Fairless's podcast. Uh, he asked me the best way to connect with me, and I was so nervous and so unprepared. I gave out my cell phone number on the Joe Fairless podcast, and I'm going to keep this <laughs> off of doing that uh, based wow. on wholesalers calling me, and they were like, hey, I listened to your Joe Fairless podcast. So <laughs> time anybody shares their cell phone number on, on the podcast, I always share that story. I love it when people do that. So uh, somebody reach out to Andrew and uh, make a deal go down. Uh, so he can share that story moving forward in the future. Andrew, thank you for sitting down with us today, buddy. Right on. Thank you, buddy. Have a good one. All right, man. Thanks so much for listening to the Titanium Vault with your host, RJ Bates III. For more info and to stay up to date, visit www.podcast.thetitaniumvault.com and on facebook.com slash thetitaniumvault. If you enjoyed the episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time on the Titanium Vault. Titanium Vault.